You are tuned in to your weekly Sunday morning word broadcast, Rama Power, with Reverend Ni nee Bernard Adiakwa, Senior Pastor of Powerhouse Ministries International, a program designed to improve your understanding into the Word of God, bring you practical solutions, and empower you to rise above life's daily challenges. Stay tuned. Hello, precious one. We wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service, at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms, and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Mana, a weekday Bible teaching service, which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online, respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m. to pray and seek His face for divine encounters. The King has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the Word of God. In Jesus' name, God richly bless you. In Psalm 78 verse 41, there's a very interesting scripture. It says, they turned their back and tempted God and they limited the Holy One. They did what? They limited the Holy One. They limited. God is awesome. God is great. God is big. And yet, they limited him. It means that what you see in life is not a true reflection of all that God can do. But your understanding has placed a limit on what God will do in your life. So if you think that as for God, he's God. By the scripture, he can do all things, isn't it? But do you really believe, do you have the mind that God can do all things for you? Because God will do what you limit him to do. He can't do beyond what you limit him to in your life. So you may experience God in a way that your mind has limited him. It doesn't mean that God cannot do it all. But your mind has limited God. My God is bigger than my mind. And so how do I get God to work great things in my life? Open my mind. I want to take the limits of God. I've come to a point where I just want to believe God for the impossible. I know we quote it. But let this mind be in you. And, and this is one of the missing links because many of you don't meditate on the word. You come to church, you hear it, it's like some excitement. But you don't go back and meditate and think and let it go into your mind. Poor people don't think. Rich people think a lot. Poor people think of things that don't matter. Rich people think through to a logical conclusion. Poor people give up on their thinking early. And they say it's too difficult. Let's go and collect uh, some people to come and do the work for us. We are not able to do it. But people who are rich, they believe that they can do it. And they have a solution. Say with me, I can do it. Say, my God is bigger than my mind. Once your spirit is alive, you are born again. Work on your mind. Beyond the prayer and fasting, work on your mind. We fast and we teach people to be chaste and to be pure. But one of the things we must learn is that our destiny is a reflection of our understanding. You do not make money just by opening a shop or starting a business. You make money by your understanding. If your understanding is unfruitful or your understanding is limited, you place a limitation on your future, you are in trouble. Work on your understanding. With all that getting, get understanding. Get understanding. Why do we fast? Why do we come to church? Why do we pray? You see, get understanding. It will improve your resolve. It will make you more aggressive to do the thing because you know that, Charlie, I know what I'm doing and my end result will benefit me. But when people don't think their end result will benefit them, why should I come to church? I don't see the end result. Why should I fast? I don't see the end result. Why should I give? I don't see the end result. Why should I come and spend two hours in church after all what? I don't see the end result. But when you are fully abreast with your understanding, it makes you see light at the end of the tunnel. I have this mind, the mind of Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That is my mind. And that's the mind of a victor. That's the mind of a winner. And now, today's message. Give yourself wholly to God and live by the principles of seed faith. Jesus compares and likens the kingdom of God to a seed which a man took and sowed. So the whole kingdom of God is likened to seeds. Jesus also used the image of a seed to explain his death and resurrection 
will have a huge impact on the world resulting in the redemption of mankind so you understand so you understand how jesus himself allowed himself as a seed except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone nevertheless if it dies so jesus christ used that analogy to show us the transition from one state into another state so by understanding if you are going through a phase of your life or you have to willfully and deliberately do some things that may seem difficult today you understand why so for example you have to go to school now for the next three years <laughs> if you clearly understand the benefits you will endure it that after three years what i earn will be totally different from what i'm earning now that after three years the opportunities that will be open to me are totally different from the opportunities that are open to me now so because you understand the end result you endure the process looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame so when people don't understand oh it's more convenient to be pushing track in the market now it's more convenient to be sitting at home doing nothing you don't have a job you are not earning income but you are more convenient sitting at home and blaming everybody and blaming witches when you should understand how the system works the product of a seed is also used symbolically to stand for the natural consequences of one's action both positive as well as negative so in galatians chapter 6 verse 7 and 8 paul warned people that they reap what they sow those who sow to their flesh and their sinful nature will reap destruction and those who sow to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life so with that understanding you see now that i understand what i do by being lazy and by sowing to the flesh i can make a choice i can make a choice my mind is fruitful my mind becomes an anchor to my faith my mind has knowledge to process to embolden me to take a step of faith so the bible says verse 7 be not deceived god is not mocked <laughs> for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he reap for he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life these are eternal principles that regulate the earth the seeds must be planted and they must die it is only then that it will grow and bear fruit the old will be buried and the new life will come up through a life of seed faith and sacrifice so we apply that seed faith into church that seed faith and believing God is not just about money and giving it to a church. No. Seed faith is a principle tied to the resurrection. That means that you can kill anything you don't like in your life. The old man, the old ways, the old system, poverty, death, sickness, destruction. That means you can kill anything by tying its life to a seed and burying it together. And when that seed dies, whatever was tied to it dies too. You can tie your pain you can tie a season you want to close to the seed and that season will die and another season and a new life will come with the resurrection that is a powerful ministry so you find out that there is understanding so when you say i'm going to give a seed faith hey it is not because somebody wants your money or is manipulating you you have come to a point where you have the mind of christ you have made up your mind you know the secrets you know how to turn things around you understand the death the burial and the resurrection of our lord jesus christ that the old man died and was buried and yet a new man the resurrected lord rose up again one who could overcome everything on this earth i've seen churches that have broken out I've seen individuals that have broken through. I've seen sicknesses that have been turned around. I've seen die situations that have stopped. And I've just had to do studies of our patriarchs in the Bible from Abraham, Moses, Isaac, Daniel, Jacob. And I've looked at the life of sacrifices and covenant and see faith. I've seen David stop a plague. I've seen a widow who is about to die turn her life around. Yeah. Because this law of resurrection and life. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. So now I have an understanding. So it doesn't matter what is coming my way. God has shown me how to stop it. I mean, you can't stop the rain, but he's giving me an umbrella to go through the rain. So now I no longer remain a victim of the circumstances of the earth or of my background or of my location. But wherever I am, I can say that I am in the world, but I'm not of the world and I'm above. Not just because I heard it in church and I'm saying it with somebody, but I have understanding and have the mind of Christ. You are not empowered by the money that you give. You are empowered by the understanding of the principle. You can do many things that seem to have the semblance of obedience and still not have the benefits because your understanding and faith is unfruitful. 
Seed faith is powerful. And many people try to copy someone, but it's important for you to understand and to walk in obedience and do it with a conviction and a strong persuasion. You can sow your seed and your pain with a seed and resurrect joy with your harvest. All kinds of things happening in your office, around you, in your community, you can tie that situation to a seed that I may be born in Choco, but I will live above Choco. And let the Choco seed die. And let the life of Christ resurrect. You may be born in an environment of sickness and poverty and things that don't work. Nothing seems to work. But you tie it to a seed. And say, God, I'm planting this seed. Just like you planted Jesus Christ in the earth. And showed us how we will all transition from the old man into a new man. May Jehovah raise people who are first mentally prosperous. So that they can be blessed. It is time to get into revelation knowledge. The Bible says that God reveals to redeem. And unfortunately, when many people quote that verse, it's only as if they've seen a picture of somebody about to die. Bravo. It means that God reveals secrets so that he will move you from the level you are to another level. He will move you from poverty into wealth. He will move you from curses into blessings. He will move you from one level to a higher level. So he's revealing things for you to be able to redeem you. So before redemption of God comes, there must be a revelation. Psalm 118 verse 27. Psalm 118 verse 27. Let's all read it together. One, two, go. God is the Lord which has showed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. So the people are in darkness. They are in a situation of confusion and chaos. They don't know what to do. And then the revelation comes and then there's light. All of a sudden they can see what to do. God is showing them the way out. You see, God himself has principles. God doesn't just come and do things and override his own principles. So God says, this is the way out. I won't just come because you are praying. I'll show you how you can come out of that problem. I'll show you how to stop that situation. I'll show you how to move forward into your next level. And he says, God is the Lord which has showed us the light. What is the light? Bind the sacrifice. Make up your mind. The word bind is a resolution. It's a strong resolve. Bind it. Bind what? Bind the sacrifice with cords. And he says, even unto the horns of the altar. You see, the horns of the altar in Jerusalem had provided a refuge for fugitives. Those who caught hold of the horns of the altar escaped the penalty for their misdeeds and they were granted asylum. So if somebody did something wrong and you were being looked for to be killed or whatever it is, all you had to do was to run and go and hold the horns of the altar. And by divine decree, once you held the horns of the altar, nobody could punish you again. You were set free. So the horns of the altar was a place of asylum. It was a place of escaping the coming judgment. God is teaching us how to avert judgment. Bind the sacrifice and bring it to the horns of the altar. The sacrifice must be brought so the fugitive shall find asylum and escape from death. The principles of sacrifice and death must run through every offering so it produces life. See, one of the mistakes many of us have made is that we come to church and we follow rituals. And they say they are giving offerings, so let's give some. Today I'm happy, so let me go and put something on the altar. But there's no understanding. There's no understanding. But God is showing us. He's showing us the light. Can somebody see the light? <laughs> what would the light do? It will give you asylum. You may be guilty. Everybody is chasing you to Charlie. Exact punishment. But your past will not catch up with you. Why? Because you run to the altar and you are holding the horns of the altar. Bind the sacrifice. Everybody says the sickness will kill you. Oh, they haven't seen the power of God. And the sad part is to find people who are Christians who quote the Bible and yet don't practice it. I pray for myself that every time I read the Bible, I will live it. I will practice it. I'm not just a church goer. It's something I don't even want to be called a church member, a church goer. No! The sacrifices, Psalm 126. And you can read from verses 1 to 6. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. The Lord turned their captivity. They were in bondage. You see, when you're in bondage, it means somebody has to tell you what to do. Somebody tells you when to wake up. Somebody tells you when to sleep. Somebody tells you what to wear. The environment dictates to you how to live. They were in bondage and the Bible says that the Lord turned their captivity. The environment tells you what you must eat. You are not free to go where you want to eat. You are not free to wear any dress because there are limitations on your freedom. So they look at you and they define you by your dressing and by the food you eat. <laughs> you are in captivity. You can't afford certain things. You can't go certain places because you are captivity. There's a boundary road you can't cross. And the Bible says that when the Lord turned it, we were like them that dream. We didn't expect it. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing and they said among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. 
The Lord has done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. Verse 4. Turn again. Turn again our captivity. Once again, we find ourselves in a situation where we seem to be restricted and limited. We can't seem to be free to do what we want to do. We are restricted in so many ways. But God, turn again our captivity. Oh Lord, as the streams in the south. So the next verse, verse 5, is going to show us how to turn away the captivity. What does he say? He says that they that sow in tears. You see, the principle of life, death, resurrection must happen again. They that sow in tears will reap in joy. So because you have understanding, when you are sowing at this stage of your life, even though you are in captivity and you don't have everything you want, I mean, if you're in captivity and you don't have enough freedoms, you don't have enough money for food, you don't have enough money for hospital, you don't have enough money for clothes, you don't have enough money for school fees. I mean, the most sensible thing you want to hear is for somebody to come and give you money, not for somebody to come and tell you so. But what is going to break is your understanding, which is light. What is going to help you is your understanding, which is going to embolden and drive your actions. Because you understand what you are doing. You understand why in the midst of this you are struggling to go back to school. You understand why in the midst of this you are struggling to earn an income and do two jobs. Because if you tell somebody in captivity to sow, in the natural it looks foolish. If you tell a widow who doesn't have a husband, who is going through poverty to sow. But you see, unless the poverty dies, prosperity will not rise. The law of mental transformation. I know you come to church, you hear a lot of things. But your mind must change. You must begin to have the mind of Christ. You must begin to start thinking differently. You must begin to start thinking like a child of God. What would Jesus do? How does Jesus overcome? How does he live? How does he confront situations? Let this mind be in you. I'm not going to let things outside come and occupy my mind. Mm -hmm. Every day I'm calculating. Mm -hmm. What is the calculation going to do? And in verse 6, he says that he that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless, I know what it will do. In one stage of my life, I'm going through something big, but I'm going through it. It's difficult, but I'm still going to school. It's difficult, but I'm still going for the prayer meeting. It looks like, Charlie, I'm still going for the fasting. It looks like, Charlie, oh God, and I'm weeping, and I'm a reproach, and I'm a disgrace, but I'm fasting. I'm praying. I'm going to church. I'm joining a department. I'm weeping and bearing precious seed. But he says, you shall doubtless, you shall doubtless, you shall doubtless come again come again. You see, they saw you going, but you'll come again. In fact, when you are going, tell them that, me, Yama Kunse. You, you may be laughing at me, maybe like I'm wasting my time. It may be like you are enjoying, but I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. And this time, I'm coming back not the way you see me. I'm coming back rejoicing with my harvest. You will see the reward of my effort. You will see the reward of my all night. You will see the reward of my seed sowing and my tight paying and giving offerings. You will see it. And I have understanding why I'm doing it. I'm not just doing it because it's a church routine. I'm not just doing it because the pastor told me I have understanding. I have the mind of Christ. The seeds are called precious because he himself has died need of those seeds for a present need and he's making a costly decision. He will feel it and go through some discomfort and pain when he lets it go. But he's willing to make that quality choice. Trusting God. In Malachi, we see a spirit called the devourer which is alive on the earth, which God himself has promised to rebuke, but it's going to require your cooperation again. He says, bring your tithe, because your tithe will secure favor. God knows that you have a devourer around you, but it's not going to do anything until the price and the conditions have been met. So turn your Bible to Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Your tithe is not the payment of a debt, because everything you own, we have learned, comes from the Lord. Your tithe is an acknowledgement that everything you own belongs to God and you honor him. And you see why the demons fight tithe. Verse 10. Let's all read it together. One, two, go. Bring ye all the tithe into the house. You see, it didn't say pay. You know, many people think, of, hey, I don't want to owe God. No, no, it says bring. There's a major difference between the play on the words. We are bringing it. It's not a force. It says bring it. You must want it. You have understanding, and so you are doing it. And it says, bring you all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. So when I bring the tithe, I provide meat in the house of God. I make the work of God easier. I provide strength into the work of the house. And there's nobody who will invest and plant in the kingdom whom the kingdom will not reward. There's nobody. If you give me something, me as a person, I may be unfaithful and not mind you. But as for God, if what I know about God is right, if what I know about God is with my understanding, there is nothing you give to God that he doesn't give back to you a hundredfold. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And look at the next verse. It says, and prove me now herewith, and see. See? And see. 
you, you will watch something happen. Why? Because you brought your tithe. Because you came with your tithe. He says, and see. So God says, there's a lot that I want to do for you, but I can't do it because you haven't obeyed something that is conditional to the provision. He says, see, if I will not open the windows of heaven, so all of a sudden, the earth dimension is over, a new life is going to come into your life. Something beyond your human effort is going to be injected into your life. He says, see if I will not open me. I am the one who receives tithe, not the church. See if I will not be involved in your life from today. See if I will not open heaven and cause the windows of heaven to be open. And I will personally guarantee that I will pour you out a blessing over your life. That there will not be room enough to receive it. Eh, eh. You see why the devil will lie to you? You see why the devil will fight? Because he knows that he can close the windows of heaven. Many people are operating under a closed heaven. I know you are praying, but that's not the answer to prosperity. I know you have needs. That's not the answer to prosperity. I know you are begging people. That's not the answer to prosperity. I know you are fasting. You see, there are different seeds for different things. Prayer is the seed for fellowship. Prayer is the seed for communion with God. If you want prosperity, it is your tithe and your giving. You cannot take an orange seed and plant it and expect an alasa fruit. So I know you are praying and you have great fellowship, but you are broke. Because what brings prosperity is not prayer. It is giving, it is tithing, it is first fruits, it is sacrificing. Oh, but you come, hey, la ba ba ba, hey, la ba ba, I'm praying in the name of Jesus. I open heavens. You don't open heavens by your mouth. You open heavens by your tithe. So I've seen people who are great prayer warriors, but they are broke. They pray a lot, but they are broke. And I've seen people who don't have fellowship with God, but they give a lot and they are rich. Because you must find the seed that gives you your harvest. You cannot plant corn seed and expect to receive wheat. So for some of you looking for prosperity, the way to change your future is not by begging. It is by learning to sow the seeds that will create your harvest. That's how I live. I give seeds. I plant seeds. I sow. I sacrifice. That is why I know that my future is secure. And if you look at the next verse, verse 11, it says, and I will rebuild the devourer for your sakes so that he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. When you start a business, you will not destroy it. The devil cannot destroy it. Why? Because that tithe is working. That seed, that offering you gave is working. So your income is protected. It says, I will rebuild the devourer. And in verse 12, verse 12 says that, and all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land. Say, yeah, the Lord. If you are not a tither, the devourer will have a field day to frustrate and scatter your business and income. When you want a harvest, look for the seed to plant. Your tithe is a seed for honor and divine protection and guaranteed income. Prayer is not the seed for financial breakthrough. Prayer is the seed for fellowship with the spirit and spiritual awakening and activating the anointing and for revival. Your tithe and your giving are the seeds for financial breakthroughs, for increase and for prosperity. Tithing makes you prioritize God's house and the kingdom. When you tithe, you are securing God's favor. The Lord begins to fight for you and protect you. Favor is not secured by prayer, but by tithing. Many are praying and running around, but the seed is tithing and giving. As a kingdom citizen, I owe allegiance to my God and my kingdom by supporting the kingdom development and progress. My tithe is my legal duty to the kingdom. The Lord teaches me tithe so that under grace, I will do it willingly and cheerfully. I understand that I belong to a kingdom. I am a citizen under a divine government, not a church member. Listen and listen carefully. I'm a citizen under a divine government. I'm not a church member. Tithing my income to God confirms my kingdom citizenship and my allegiance to this kingdom and allows the meat in the house, the provision to allow the infrastructure of God to go on. Because of my tithing, more people can be sent on outreach. More buses can be arranged for people to come in. More people can be employed and given full time. It means that my tithing helps the work of God to go on. You see, any country where people don't support the country through taxation, the country is poor. Africa is not cursed. Africa has a major problem of people contributing to the development of their own country. And unfortunately, it seeps into the churches. There are many people in the church, you don't care about how the church progresses. You've never done anything for the church. You will never do anything for the church. You will get angry and shout. And Meanwhile, when you want to get married, when you want to have a funeral, when you want to have, then you come to church. But you will be angry to contribute anything to the church. So I want to ask you a question. Do you really want the kingdom of God to progress? Because what you don't support, how can it bless you? If there are no pastors to go around, when you are sick, which pastor will come to your house? Because there's no meat. There's no money to employ pastors. So you just go to a church, you go and sing, you insult the pastors, you are always angry when it comes to finances. You complain a lot, but you are the one person 
who doesn't support the kingdom work? A poor government is a weak government with poor citizens. <laughs> Do not just be a church member. Be a citizen of the kingdom. So many people are operating under a closed heaven. Too many people. Because many people are not tithing and have allowed the devourer into their lives. But God will open heaven and allow the rains to fall upon the earth to open up the ground to begin to yield forth their fruit. And this is evidence that we do not just rely on our own for life here on this earth. Do not allow all kinds of devourers and evil spirits and witchcraft spirits to destroy and to steal because heaven is closed. Some people attend prophetic meetings and miracle meetings upon miracle meetings, but the heavens are closed. If you want to experience manifestation of favor with God, tithe and see. Tithe and see. Heavens open. Let God rebuke the devourer. It's no longer your matter. God says, I will rebuke the devourer. There are some prayers tithers don't need to pray because God will fight for you. He will rebuke the devourer and you can tithe your way out of trouble. So all I've done is to bring you up to a point where you can understand why sometimes it's painful but it's necessary because it's the future. I'm a teacher of the word. A teacher brings light. He explains things. It makes you begin to understand. You test God and see. You enter into sacrifices and see. You begin to identify with seed faith and plant something and begin to see the new life. They look at you and they knew you a year ago. But they look at you and they see the open door and they say, are you the same person? Are you the one who was in school with us in class one? Look at you. What happened to you? We're all in the same church or school, but look at you. We're all in the same choco, but look at you. We are all started life together, but look at you. Why? Because you are operating under an open heavens with understanding. To go through life without understanding is to frustrate your own self. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Psalm 82 verse 5 is a very interesting verse. It says that they know not, neither will they understand. So two things about people who get destroyed. They know not. I make a say any. Neither will they understand. They don't have understanding. They dance. They don't, they don't even understand the importance of praise and worship. For them, oh, it's just a nice tune in church. They don't understand that praise and worship is a weapon. Because they don't understand. And they know not. It says that they walk on in darkness. They are still children of God, but no knowledge, no understanding. And they are still walking in darkness. When there's light, they are still walking in darkness. And the Bible says that all the foundations of the earth are out of course. At a certain age, it should be somewhere, but it's out of course. At a certain stage, you'd have gone through a certain place, it's out of course. Everything about you is out of course. The foundations of the earth is out of course. The next verse. I have said, you are all gods. You are all children of the most high God. Seven. But they die like men and fall like one of the princes. Not me. I refuse to be ignorant. I refuse to be in confusion. I will get knowledge. I will get understanding. And I will apply it in my life. We are in Choco, but we are not of Choco. I refuse to be limited by my background of my father and my mother. If they didn't do well, it should not have a bearing on me. And I can break it by sowing and letting the old die and giving my life to Jesus Christ. Today, make a decision. Don't be double-minded and unstable. God is the Lord which has shown us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar and escape. Escape poverty. Escape sickness. Escape judgment. Don't be ignorant. Hello, precious one. We wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service, at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms, and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Mana, our weekday Bible teaching service, which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online, respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m. to pray and seek His faith for divine encounters. The King has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the Word of God. In Jesus' name, God richly bless you. Thank you for listening to Rhema Power with Reverend Nee Bernard Adiakwa. We hope you've been blessed. 
For further information, contact 0303-931-841. Tune in next week for another insightful teaching on Rhema Power. Shine up,